Hey guys, it's GHP, and today we're going to look at the first four cards from the new expansion, The Dead Reckoning. Uh, so, we've started getting spoilers over the last three days, um, I believe, maybe four. We got two yesterday, one today, one day four. Okay, four. Um, I'm kind of excited. Uh, the set, in my opinion, I'll be blunt, started off a little bit on the weak side with the first two cards. We are going to be going through them in order. And we're going to be talking uh, about their constructed... Uh, applications and where I think they'll be good, where I think they'll be bad, and overall kind of where I rate the cards. So I start with Bury the Past. Uh, before we talk in depth about how good this card is, do note that this is removal in time. That's not something we're used to. But it's six uh, for a three-time influence spell, and you can put a unit or relic on the bottom of its owner's library. Um... So this is kind of similar to Hearthstones and Tomb. The one difference is in Tomb, put it into your deck. And I think that's what this card is missing. I think it's six mana. Um, the effect, let's compare this card to Feeding Time. Well, Feeding Time is also slow speed. It's two less mana. It cannot hit relics, and it actually kills things. Um, that's only really relevant versus decks with Celestial Omen, Rise of the Challenge, and any other tutors that get printed in the future. Um... But it is definitely relevant at its downside. It's worse than making it into a 1-1 one -one frog, for example, um, and destroying it. Like, that's something you have to keep by when evaluating this. Then you look at the mana cost. It's 6 mana uh, for this effect. 6 mana removal is kind of weak. You don't really play mono time for removal, and if you do, you play killers. Do note that this is going to compete with Cardasaur. It's the same influence cost, same mana cost. Cardasaur is better than this card. Um, often Cardasaur comes down, kills something, and survives. It, uh, also, this card needs to be able to hit through Aegis, in my opinion. The fact that 6 mana removal gets blocked by Aegis, that's real bad. Overall, I don't really know if Barry the Past has any slots except in decks that A can get lots of mana and lack hard removal, maybe Praxis, and B in sideboards. Um, this card is so weak against aggro that it makes it maybe just too weak out ladder to play. Uh, in tournaments, sure, it might be nice to put, say, your Great Coin Titan or something randomly right on the bottom of your deck. Or, sorry, your opponent's Titan on the bottom of their deck. Uh, do know that this can affect your unit. So maybe there's a world where, like, you have something that has fate. It gets, so maybe it gets better when you draw it again and you could rise for it. But that's a really specific scenario that I don't really think is worth the payoff. Uh, overall, I don't really think Barry the Pass is a very powerful card. I think the effect is cool. Uh, I just don't think this is something that could help a time faction deck. And I just don't think they ever want to spend 6 mana for this. Uh, so I'm going to move on to an the next card. And this is one that a lot of people seem to be a little unsure of. And that is Akaria, the Oversized. That's better. Alright, so Akaria is a 2 mana 1-1 one, one Valkyrie with double justice cost. That's tough to do on turn 2 all the time. It's a really weak body, but let's find out what the effect is. So it's a, a flying dirt. so worst case scenario, um, it's a 2 out of 1 1 flying endurance Valkyrie. That's not very good. You could have 6 justice, and, and it's now a 4-3. Um, and ultimate, you could pay 3 to play a justice signature from your deck to play it. So it's kind of like a secret pages on a body. Each Valkyrie in your hand gets bigger. Um, I think this card's really bad. <laughs> so I'll get that out of the way. Um, I think the stat line on this card is very weak. Uh, the one thing to note is it's probably okay in a Model Justice deck. Uh, because turning this out is okay. Um, I think as a 2-drop, it's so low impact that she's almost not worth casting then. And I also think as a 5-drop, I don't think I would play a... 5 mana, 4, 3, flying endurance that put a Justice Sigil into play and maybe gave plus a plus a to like 1 Valkyrie. I don't think that's very powerful. I don't think that card's constructed playable. And that's one of the best case scenarios of this card. You could also play it on turn 2 and use it as a rip spell. But I'm not sure the decks that are actually going to play a Valkyrie like this. Like it has the Gwen of Valkyrie's deck, it's so bad otherwise. I uh, actually care about the ramp that much. 
This card feels like they went, oh, it's too weak. Let's add another thing on it. Oh, it's too weak. Let's add another thing on it. Oh, it's too weak. It continuously going. I feel like this card doesn't really have any direction. Um, we have Flying Endurance, which is okay. But then for it to actually be able to attack reasonably, it takes so much Justice influence. And then it randomly ramps you. Um, overall, I think this is a mash of cards that actually turned out to be pretty weak. I know some people really like Akari. I just don't think she's really very good. I don't think she's doing anything special. Um, you could gain... Um, you could use this card as a two-drop of Valkyries. But I think I would rather take my blunders that I have some pretty shitty two-drops of that deck. Because... I don't think this card incentivizes you to play Valkyries at all, and I think it's worse to say Battlefield Scavenger. Right? It might not be, that's, but that's a card that some of the list play. Maybe take your Overseer, it's definitely worse than it. It's worse than Archer Point Instigator. So, the cards it's competing with in any of the Valkyries decks are just too weak. And I don't think you ever play, like, Ricardo Valkyries right now, because you're actually playing Mono Justice Valkyries with Akaria. But then you just don't have the cards to support it, although this card is okay there. Uh, overall, I don't think Akari is very powerful. Um, she does a lot of cool things. Like, the card's cool, but I'm not a fan. Uh, I know this is a little bit controversial. I know some people have gotten some hate for this. But I do kind of wish that the lead characters, uh, so to say, could, like, this storyline's about Akari, for those of you who haven't looked at the story. Um, I kind of wish the lead characters were more powerful. I know this is the youth version of Akari, so as someone on Reddit said, this is what happens when... Uh, Akaria chooses to be cut down instead of rise up, which is her, the inverse of her quote. Um, I don't think this card's very good. I don't think it's going to see very much play. Uh, once the meta actually shakes out, I'm sure people are going to try this card because it's cool. The fact that it does the Varus favor and Torch is really bad. Hell, it does the Torch when it's turned on. I think this card at minimum needed to be a 1-2. Then it could also block something like a Grenadin. Um, and... When you turn it on, it no longer gets torched and never could get Vera's favored. I think that one extra health will go a long way. I doubt they're going to change cards, though. So, I'm going to have to be a little sad on this one. But I don't think, uh... I don't think a card is very good. But, a card I do think is quite good. Um, I'd like to take a moment before we start talking about this card. To give it a shout out to Tony G. I'm sorry, bud. We need, we can hug it out. So this is the thing. Uh, it's a new Huru card, which they already had some good three drops, but this is one that's Huru exclusive, so it's um, a little hard to cast. It's the same style influence as Vadius, which is reasonable to cast. It can be a little difficult, but it's worth noting. Um, so two justice at a primal for a three four. That's okay. Seraph's a good card without ultimate flying overwhelm so without reading any more of the card this is better than seraph which is an amazing card without the ultimate then weapons can't be played now one thing i've seen a lot of people uh read wrongly is this is two-sided you can't play this into hammer of might uh but what it means is you can't play this and get rune hammered it's an unseen which is relevant and it's a bird which i don't think is relevant yet but could be eventually because uh, we have a lot of good birds. Um, this card's really powerful. It's in a really good body. It's really hard to remove. You can't torch it. You can't annihilate it. You can't vanquish it. You can't rune hammer it. Um, it's really hard to remove this card. It's super good against aggro because nothing deals with it. And one thing to know, um, one of the best ways for something like Stone Scar to deal with this card is Hideout Pistol, which also can't be cast. The weapons can't be played cause is very relevant. Um, I think this is just a good card. I think the real hope for this card is in decks that aren't Huru, because Huru is still lacking some pieces. Maybe we get some other good Huru cards with this expansion. Um, but right now, this card um, is super powerful. Like I think Akari Ibu can play it with ease. Um, I think the Shadow, uh, so Huru Shadow, whatever you want to call it, Felmport, I believe is the name. Um, that can play this card. Like, this is a really pushed card. Um, I'm happy Huru's getting some love. It's one of the weaker factions. Now all it needs is for them to put in the damn Fork Fest. <sighs> I still don't understand. Um, 
This card's super powerful. It's gonna make weapons worst. Um, now revenge happened, and it turned out Arby didn't really care that much about revenge. Like it's good against it, but it just didn't come up enough. Um, this cause can sure it's gonna get slayed a lot by like armory decks, but you like if those decks ever get popular, this card's gonna just run it down. I think this card's gonna see a lot of play. Uh, the fact that Turu kind of sucks for the three faction decks and stuff. Um, although that that's like strategize Harshwell, well, that's a good start. Um, I think this card's going to see a ton of play. I also think this is going to slot right into Huru Control, which only had uh, Valkyrie Enforcer as three drops. Hoover Midrange already had Unseen Command and Enforcer, but I'm sure it can make room for this guy. It's better than some of the other cards it's playing. I think this card's really good. I think it's going to see a lot of play, and I'm really excited to play it. Uh, the fact that it's an unseen, by the way, is relevant. We have cards like Dark Veil Agent, which aren't particularly great, but they do have an effect. We do know that Unseen is a tribe they're trying to support, and it also gets turned up by Unseen Commando, because this card needed buffs, right? Let's look at our last card of the day. This card came out, like, ten minutes before I started recording. Um... It needs to be resized properly because this image is blurry and I can't do anything about it. But, um, yeah, this just came out on stream. Before I talk about it, since we're talking about uh, Conway Wood's stream, they've announced uh, and they are currently showing the uh, new Twitch extension for Eternal, which is awesome. It's going to let me and other streamers uh, make our lives a lot easier, to be honest. I'm really excited for it. Uh -huh. Just things like Deckless on the screen without having to use a third-party uh, software. But let's talk about the card now. So 2 out of 2-2, two, two, Gedui Warcry Unseen. Okay, things to note. Unseen. Uh, it's one shadow that's relevant. Gedui Warcry. So you compare this instantly to uh, Ricardo Outlaw. And do realize before you make that comparison that Ricardo Outlaw is a really good card. This card is worse than Ricardo Outlaw, in my opinion. That doesn't make it bad. So, I don't think you compare them. I don't think you're playing them in Stone Scar. But, a 2-2 two, two for 2 is not great. The fact that it has Deli means it's always relevant, and it can always attack. Um, War Cry means it's meant to be attacking. It's two battle skills, which is great for something like Unseen Commando, which you're clearly supposed to curve out into. Um, in your new Arjun port on scene deck, just play it, try it, I want to, sorry. Um, this card is really interesting, the fact it's not Gunslinger kind of shocked me. Um, I think it's playable. The fact is, this card's never going to be a really bad draw, because it can always trade with something your opponent's doing. Um, I feel like this card's going to get Desert Marshaled a lot, um, but that's okay. Like, it's still your 2-drop trading for their 2-drop, but that's fine. And their 2-drop is probably more important if it's Desert Marshal, as it's one of the best cards of the game. Um, I think this card's going to see some play. The question is, what home is there? Uh, right now, it might not see play when the expansion drops, because we don't really have any reason to play Archer Port uh, Unseen. We don't really have a reason to play Felon Unseen yet. But I think this is a step in the right direction towards making those decks more viable. I think this card, if you compare it to the other Unseen, though, in its colors, Maris. Uh, Maris is probably a little bit worse than this card. I Maris is a pretty good card. Uh, but Maris is kind of slow and can't always attack, and it gets blocked real easy, and that's a real issue. Uh, and then if you look at the other colors, you have Dark Veil Agent, which is a pretty weak card in a lot of circumstances. Um... I think it's better than that. So if those are our comparison points, that makes this card pretty powerful. Overall, I really like this card. Um, I haven't thought about it as much as the others, so like my review may be a little bit rusty here. But I think the card is going to see a fair bit of play uh, once you find the right deck. I do not think you could fit in Stone Scar with Instigator and Outlaw. Um, so you gotta look at the other faction. So, Xena and Aggro, sure, it doesn't have any good 2-drops. Uh, so there's a good slot for it. Uh, Shadow, we already said Argent Port, which I don't know if this card's better than Taker Overseer, which is something I need to consider. Um, it's, I think, it's worse than Instigator. 
but I think this card might be good enough to beat Tinker Overseer. The issue is aren't supposed to move towards flying so much that Tinker's kind of important. Uh, but that deck just needs two drops, and this is an okay one. Uh, and then what's our other options? We have Stone Scar, we have, oh, Felon. And we already mentioned, it's, I think it's better than at least Maris. And that and Dark Village, it obviously go in the same deck. Um, so, like, it competes with some good slots. Uh, I think this card's playable. Um, but it won't be, like, everywhere. And it's not a slam dunk at every deck. Um, so that's gonna wrap up for today's review. I'll keep trying to put out these videos when new cards get released. Um, so I want to say thanks to everyone for watching. I'm excited to hear, uh, more about the expansion. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the comments and stuff. And, uh, I'm real curious what this expansion holds, especially since they dropped Akaria real quick. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.